All right, here we go. This is episode two of Two Star Mavericks, and we are on Sandrum. This is a Two Star Elo spectated game. I am just deciding to randomly spectate some random games, so uh, I re I really hope I don't have to re-record again. Last time I, I this is this is the second take of episode two. But just just to let you guys know, and we do have it between the blue team in the upper left hand corner, Aronkar V in the standard Osprey, and Carlos V. I'm, I'm gonna guess that's Viat, like the double L with Spanish. It's kind of, it, it, it's kind of like Viat. It's like a, like a, like a Y sound kind of thing. Okay, but uh, dude's gonna be Carlos from now on. Um, just Carlos, so <laughs> it's much easier in the standard Warthog and Sergeant Swifter in the standard Neo and King of CLE3, uh, who uh, will th 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 this thus far now just be known as King, doing a ninja with probes. Oh, you were better off just grabbing the initial creeps that are coming that pretty much come out immediately. Um, and and, and I, mean, I guess he is a warthog, so he is able to delight these bulbs fairly quickly. He will grab this outpost just because no one responded to it. But if anyone responded with any quickness whatsoever, they would have been able to shut down that ninja attempt. Um, just because those were probes, all they have to do is hit the probe like once with any mech and they die. So that's not a good idea to do. You know, attack and do trying to ninja with probes. And typically, actually, you do see an inf spam fest here at mid on Sandrum, just because this middle outpost has four sockets, island protected, and is a power station. Probably, probably the most powerful outpost in any map and we do see this outpost getting taken back by blue got caught neutralized it is sort of defended um, by two t99s and king of cle is coming back here with probes but will not be able to completely retake it there were infantry that did walk in there are still even three bulbs up for blue and now these guys go back up to blue these t99s are going to have kind of a hard time retaking this especially with zippers in defense Okay, um, I don't think I've ever seen a bunkered zipper before. Um, not really sure what to say about that besides don't do it. Those are not gonna defend against anything except maybe probes, which I guess reinforces my initial uh, initial claim last episode that mid-level players know how to play against mid-level players and zippers do uh, attack pretty well against infantry I mean they will probably lose against four infantry versus maybe two zippers I, I've never I mean I, I, I've never done the math I've never felt the need to ever do that math but um, I just, maybe I should now maybe I should just do pointless math um, and, uh, <laughs> now King, uh, Carlos trying to drop some infantry, oh, actually dropped some zippers back here, which are actually kind of effective, but he did drop this one a little too close to this moneymaker, so instead of going for this outpost, it was attacking the moneymaker, uh, it, they do get killed pretty quickly, we do have a runner spam, I think zippers are 90% runner, uh, 90% 90 chance of spamming a runner, which a lot of people don't like that, uh, th they don't like that chance percentage thing, uh, we would rather have something a little more concrete typically but uh, right now that is how it works uh, runners spawn uh, runners are spawned from zippers about 90% of the time and we do have Carlos coming with four zippers uh, gonna be under attack by King of ZLE and actually King is not uh, just not even close not even close but Carlos is going with zippers <laughs> he's going with zippers to attack the fort and the huge defense goes down for for red and these zippers are just gonna do nothing but make noise happen for red because they attack for pretty much nothing. Uh, let me, you know what? Let me check my spreadsheet again. I don't remember that. I don't memorize this. But um, zippers attack for very, very little. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna guess something like 40 something light attack. And that's not that's not. I'm, I think I'm being a little conservative actually. Hold on. Let me let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Oh no no! It's 60. My bad. It is 60. Uh, but, but still, it is light attack, and against the fort, it will be, uh, it will be 10% of that damage, and that is only 6 DPS against the fort, so, uh, typically don't want to try to backdoor with zippers, unless all you're trying to do is distract, and at that point, zippers can be sent anywhere, pretty much immediately, because they're the fastest unit in the game, uh, right? I mean, 
and then and you could have just sent it straight to the fort. And I think at least if you sent if you sent four zippers from that outpost on the side, give or take, uh, it probably would have at least two would have probably at least reached the fort without getting killed. I'm not sure 100 percent on that, but I mean. It's they're zippers. Zippers are meant to be sent quickly or to be dropped uh, 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 you know, on, on a defenseless corner of an outpost to neutralize it. And Carlos getting chased down by Sergeant Swifter there, but not you know the Neo versus the Warthog. You really have to chase it for a long time to be able to put down enough DPS to actually kill the thing. Oh, because Warthogs are pretty insane in the air, in in terms of uh, DPS, and we still have the zippers bunkered in the bunkers. Bunkered in the bunkers, yeah, I mean, sure, whatever. Uh, but, and now, we do see a bunch of uh, units going down here on the island here, <laughs> uh, but if you take a quick scout, this is fairly easy to neutralize, um, so they could have just dropped back here or something, but, you know, I just, that's asking a little too much at this point. Uh, I would feel a little bad trying to demand, and around, what? Is he is he trying to heal is he trying to heal a rock? Is he doing Tai Chi? What are you doing? Do something not this! Do something that's not this! Stop! Go, go, lift off and do something! Stop! No, you're gonna die! You're gonna die! No, go! Leave! Oh, you lucky level off! How, how about that? Be beginner's luck, I guess, right? But, uh, yeah. He, well, he, I, I, I don't know if he thinks... Maybe he thinks that plus sign... In, 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 that's the ability for heal. Uh, maybe he thought that was, uh, you know, game stuff. Maybe, maybe he thought that was like salvage, which, it, which it is. It is salvage, but you have to do it on something that's salvageable, not a rock on the side. And he does die there. Um, surprise, surprise. Uh, and, and now, and now there was a couple drops over here by Red. Not quite close enough. If you're going all the way, if you're going from like here. All the way over here, you might as well take the extra one second to travel here and drop it right here on the front door. But that's just my opinion, you know. Play the game however you want to play it. Uh, I am not here to judge. I am just here to give my opinion. Um, and, uh, and, and right now, we do see Carlos doing that air ground like a boss and does land. Yes! Yes! Land against that T-99, do that damage, and gets that kill before he gets finished off by that Bertha. Oh, holy hell! Um, what? <laughs> he, just, he just exploded there. Um, yeah, okay. So he, he did get wrecked by that Bertha, uh, real quick. And now, right now, Red is trying to take the corner, even though they have like a fat clump of units sitting here. They are still trying to take the corner, which is not a hundred percent necessary, in my opinion. Uh. They are having quite a hard time doing it, and King of CLE almost dies there. Um, and Sergeant Swifter firing in with his Neo ground attack. <laughs> um, they don't. They, they have plenty of power. They have plenty of credits. Sergeant Swifter can just bring a couple more Longhorn, um, and they can really clean up the rest. Of, there's like not that much left over here. Um, but you know, and, and Arankar uh, with these generators. He has generators in cargo, and he has T99s on the sockets, and where is he going? Where is he going? Where is he going? He's going to fill these sockets. Okay. All right, he's got one down. Good. Nice, slow and steady. He does win the race eventually, right? Okay, so so the two... Oh, he's like... Oh, those other socks are taking. I gotta find some empty ones here. Oh, oh no. Uh, there's a T99 there. There's, there's, a, there's a gun turret that shoots missiles over there. I, where can I put it? Maybe I can put it down here somewhere. Um, where the... Or the enemy is maybe they have some extra sockets in their sockets and they're in need of some blue generators. Uh, so I'll just drop them over here in the corner and um, I will uh, run out of energy and fly in circles over nothing, so I don't have the opportunity to land and die and leave my generators there for red team to get experience from. Uh, you know that's one semi-viable strategy if you are going for the psychological warfare. Um, but usually in the normal fight, uh, you don't drop random generators on the other side of the map, ferrying them pretty much around the entire map first, and then leaving them for dead before getting killed. Um, but once again, your style of play, I don't want to dictate, I don't want to dictate how you play. I'm just going to sit here and observe and just 
state my my recommendations um, here with Carlos actually doing a fairly good job with hitting kill, killing these T99s on the ground. He probably could do a lot better, but just bringing another unit over here like one of these T99s or this other T99 that isn't doing it isn't doing anything at all. Um, you know, maybe oh, and does get killed eventually by those. Uh, you know, didn't keep an eye on his health bar. I attributed it to that. I mean, I think you know with enough reaction time he would have been able to get away, but he just wasn't keeping an eye on his health bar. Uh, so, you know, uh, uh, it, it, that, that, you know, j you know, j I guess that was kind of like map awareness thing. Like, if he saw it, he would have been able to react, I think. I have complete faith in him that time to do that. But, uh, this time, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe he just, uh, maybe, maybe he had to get the phone or something. And then he was like, hey, uh, uh, uh no, I'm, I'm playing, I'm playing game. Oh, you made me die. I was distracted. You know, so, I mean, you know, if he saw it, I think, I think I'm going a little too far with this for a little too long, but, uh, there really isn't anything to talk about anymore, except, I guess, for this zipper spam. Um, you know, bunkered zippers, um, one of the things that, uh, one of the new things that I've never ever seen, again, just spectating these two, I mean, hey, guys, you gotta try it, man. You, 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 look at, look at all those, oh, there's a three-star ELO match, oh, there's, there's Punchonica's in it, or, oh, hey, mate, oh, there's a Stardog or Tanji, um, oh, hey, oh, Boom Howard Valinor in matchmaking, okay, yeah, those are cool, right? But, and you know that you, when you watch them, you're gonna be quite amazed, okay? But it will be the same kind of amazement that you are used to seeing high-level players play um, on Air Mech. Right now, this is a new kind of amazement that you have never experienced before, and that is the magic of seeing these are still there zippers and bunkers. Freaking, freaking revolutionary right there. And, and you know what the cool thing is? When they die, they are spawning runners, and the runners will walk back into the outpost. I mean, failsafe right there. That that is the definition of a failsafe. And red has so many units here and king dies trying to take out this seeker and this hat um, and two Geminis. Uh, literally standing here is a death trap for any mech. Um, but with all these units that just need to move a couple inches on the map uh, right here. And let, you know what? Let me go into free cam. I have not gone into free cam yet uh, at all in any of my videos. But whoosh, look at this. Oh, look at those cool missile trails. But yeah, um, if they just maybe moved like from here to here, right here, where King is. King just needs to put the units that are sitting right there and put them right here, where he is. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop freaking out, Free Cam. Stop freaking out. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, we do have... Uh, I'm going to go back out here. Uh, we do have an incredibly jackal fortified outpost over here. There ain't going to be no... Uh, no infantry drops that are going to work at all on this side. Um, and we oh, and look, Carlos is doing a pretty darn good job uh, cleaning the rest of the units over here that Red has brought over. And Sergeant Swifter does evacuate when almost gets killed by that Warthog on the way out. But, you know, uh, uh, with, with that last minute uh, drop and turn and burn, did, was able to save that. And our on-card did get killed by Sergeant uh, on his way to that mid. And right now, Carlos, actually, I would say Carlos is the MVP of this match at this point. Even though they they don't have any map control except for the their closest, uh, they have lost corner. See, look at that. He he led Sergeant Swifter into his own death. That the, don't get any you don't get any more badass than that. I think, in my opinion. And we do have five grinders in queue for King of CLE three. I, I still don't know how to, how to say that. Maybe the other three is an E, and I should just be saying clean. But we do have five grinders. We have another Gemini coming up. Um, we, I, I don't know what's going to happen. This is going to be madness. We're going to see five grinders make a slow turtle-like put. Is he putting them down in defense? Why is he putting one way back here? Is he putting that down in defense? Uh, or is he just trying to get us around with a nice mix of units because I mean theoretically that that works too I mean it works in it works in most RTS games I guess you know like Starcraft get a good mix you know just be safe against everything but you know uh, are, are we gonna see a push come on come on man push you're good you're good you have a lot of heavy units and there are nothing but jackals over here you will rip the hell out of this army um, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be glorious. They have medium armor. Gemini's have medium attack for 100. They are more effective than Longhorn in this case. Come on! Oh, he's slowly ferrying a grinder. What is he doing? Okay, I, he doesn't die, so that's good. But now Carlos is gonna get free reign to hit him. This uh, grinder in the back, and it actually dies at the same time as the jackal. So, oh, and King, why face to face with the seeker? Why? Why face to face with the seeker? Oh, and next to all those, oh, I just, oh. Oh, 
Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. So we do have a great stalemate for who knows why. Um, oh, and Sergeant with that liftoff gets the great timing on Arankar. Oh, damn. Badass right there. Um, <laughs> I don't know why that was so exciting. I guess that was probably the most real high-level move I've seen this entire match with that timing liftoff. Um, and King almost died before getting back to his outpost with that T-99 for the heal. Um, and uh, <laughs> they have plenty of uh, healing units on the field, actually. They have a lot of uh, a lot of ratchets. Oh, no, is that Blue Team? Blue Team is the one with a lot of ratchets and patchers and stuff. Um, patchers, actually. I should get that. I should get that. I should get that straight. But they do have three patchers on the field. Uh, Carlos is getting all the time in the world to finish off that T-99. And right now, we just have a weird... Just ferrying one thing at a time, and King Trent get, yes gets it down, does drop it before he dies, and Carlos is gonna, probably not gonna be able to save this grinder or this uh, this T99 before the grinder kills it. Um, or is he? Or is he? Is the grinder gonna win? No. Oh, the grinder does win, and the T99 does die. Oh, and we do see Sergeant just directly shooting the outpost from the back. Uh, would have been really really beneficial to bring one unit with him. Anything would have been better than just him. Um, even zippers, even zippers, which he does have, ironically, in his loadout. Um, uh, he, uh, guys, uh, here's a good tip. If you don't know exactly how to use zippers, change them out of your loadout, okay? Because even, even top-level players have problems using zippers right now. Um, z I mean, unless you're Kid Nakua in a booster saucer, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but just... Probably a good idea to not use zippers and King getting taken out by like 40 T99s and Seekers there. Um, that is on that is an obvious exaggeration, but it felt like it at the time with all those missiles coming at him. Um, and right now, Aronkar and Carlos just chilling over the fort, kind of figuring out what to do. Don't have any pilots flying them, so I have no idea how these mechs are being controlled at all. So, uh, you know, that maybe, maybe instead of no pilot, we should change that to something like... I don't know, uh, uh, no dude, or like a uh, uh, default guy, default guy, default no face guy, uh, who's like scary, where he's like, he has like a completely black face that it doesn't have any, ha have any facial characteristics at all, and actually Sergeant Swifter also has, um, also does not have a, a pilot, however he, you know, he, he does have a Neo, I wish you could see items, like, I want to know what items these guys have equipped right now. Um, if it's none, or if it's something, you know, uh, <laughs> and Arankar and Carlos just chilling at their fort, uh, Arankar queuing up fixers, man, like, hey, uh, just in case they come over, I, I want some, I want some, uh, paramedics here, you know, to, to do their duty, uh, cause I don't want to lose any more units than I have to at this point, uh, however, they, uh, King is getting a free attack to shoot this T-99 down, but, uh, is, is he gonna get away? Yes, he does get back to his outpost. That The Warthog, personally, I always believe that the Warthog, ever since that speed buff, it was just buffed a little too much. Like, right now, it is, it is freaking zippy. It is really fast, and, uh... Uh, yeah, uh, whenever I use Warthog, I, I, I can't believe some of the times that I get away from battles when I could have sworn that I am the slow-moving Warthog. Uh, but those days are over. Um, you know, I do not use, I do not use Beppo or Mako anymore, so, uh, I could not stand that. I do typ typically now. I, I, you know, I've been recently going with the Raven Hog because I really do like that extra speed with the Warthog. You really get, you really surprise people on that chase with that tap flyer. Uh, and if you don't know what those things are, um, I, I, you know what? I, I have a little bit of time to explain. What, when you're Warhog and you, you're firing, you're holding down a fire button, uh, it slows you down when you're firing, right? So if you just, instead of hold the button down, the hold the attack button down, you tap it over and over again, uh, you know, using different timings to have different amounts of slowdown, but usually it's just tap, 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 tap. Uh, you, you'll be okay. And we still haven't had a push out by Red. Oh, there are so many. Ge Look how many Gemini there are. Why haven't you moved out yet, King? King? Why? Set them all on Y and you'll win. Set them all on Y and you'll win. There is ah, there are nothing but there's a single T99 and a bunch of light unit or you know lighter units like some medium Gemini's here. And is it? I mean, is is he just? Uh, they are only at plus 18 power, plus 15 right now. So it, it, it it's t it's about time to push. It's about time to push. Sergeant Swifter has 87,000 credits, and Arankar is pretty much maxed out. I didn't... Uh, okay, 
Uh, okay, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. I, I'm, I'm gonna keep my cool. I'm gonna keep my calm. And King is just gonna get himself killed once again. No, he does use that timing of those seekers. The reload time, I guess, is what you could call it. I think. I think that's technically what it is. The reload time. And he is. Uh, he is linking these ratchets to uh, the, some of the some of the tanks he has down. Um, and producing another Gemini. But they only have five power right now. I, uh, they really need to just push out. Carlos and Aronka are just like, uh, are, are we like playing a video game right now? Or are we just like watching somebody do something? I, I don't know. Uh, and and <laughs> we have a Bertha firing out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know if they could reach, if it could reach this. Because right now Berthas are a little, uh, artillery in general are pretty bugged. So I <laughs> It, can this reach? I, I don't know. I think it might be able to reach this, assuming it was uh, in operating under normal circumstances, like one or two patches ago. Uh, but as of now, it's not firing at anything, and Carlos and Sw and Sergeant right now is duking it out. Uh, Sergeant <laughs> hesitating real quick, like, oh, uh, should I go back? And it's funny because if these were sitting down here instead of up here, you know, like 10 seconds of ferrying back and forth in a circle, and Red would own this outpost. There would be nothing that Blue could do Okay, there, there would be nothing that Blue probably would do. Let's put it that way. And we do finally see a push coming out. They, they are set on Y. They are going straight past this outpost. Um, and as of now, we do see pretty much emptiness on the rest of the map. But we do have a push coming out. And we do have Sergeant distracting Carlos. Uh, please end the game. Please, please, please end the game. Um, oh, and a wrong car. You know what? Why am I continually been talking to Arankar uh, about Arankar like 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 he's a real person because he's just an AI right now. It's Carlos that has been the MVP of this match I'm, in my opinion. I mean, Sergeant and King have been doing a pretty good job, but you know, they have had each other in support and Carlos has just been trying to figure this out by himself hanging out with his buddy uh, with that asterisk next to his name and I'm probably not really even aware that the asterisk meant anything and we do start we do have a lot of Gemini coming up now when the, the looks like the train is not not gonna stop um, and, and <laughs> uh, and we do have King oh brings a Gemini to the front door bravo bravado um, I don't know if that word actually applies someone correct me uh, but anyway, uh, th we we do have a lot of green, a lot of uh, red units pushing up on this fort. Life is going down at a steady, steady rate. Uh, we do have the King firing at a Bertha that's doing nothing, so that was not that productive. But you know, once again, playstyle uh, preference, and we do have Blue taking the defeat. Red team, Sergeant Swifter and King of CLE three do take this ranked two-star Elo game on Sandrum against a wrong car B AI mode and Carlos Villat V Villat. Sure sure. Um, if you spectate an awesome two star even one star ELO game, or if you're a two star ELO player and you just feel like being made fun of here, <laughs> um uh, check my forum post. I do have it linked in the video description. If you do not have replay set up yet, that will help you out. Uh, set up a mana or run FedComps batch file. Um, and uh, send me a replace if you want to be featured on my channel. This is RUI, and that was episode two. See you next time.